Right, we're talking for our first conversation today about ageism. Now, maybe you've never experienced ageism. Maybe maybe you um, are respected as you get older. You, you know, you're treated well at work. I'd love to hear from you if that's the case. Others are not. Uh, age is but a number and all those other phrases that are often used. But have you experienced ageism? It's a bigger of an issue. Uh, in work and at home and, uh, you know, in social circles as well. 08000 855 949. Have you experienced ageism? You can text 81333. Start that text with the word bristle. Uh, Saskia Griffiths-Moore is, um, has set up uh, a Talent is Timeless. Saskia, good morning to you. Hi, John. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, why did you set it up? Why did you set up a Talent is Timeless? Well, I will tell you a very brief story. This is a community organization focused on challenging ageism in the music industry. Mm -hmm. And the reason I started it was because I am a folk artist and I was playing um, a gig and I went back to stay at someone's house, probably the promoter or the, the venue organizer. They often put the band up. We were having a jam session after the gig and the guy who was hosting us was absolutely incredible. And, um, and I said to him, why have I just played a gig when you were there in the audience and you were organizing it? Why weren't you on stage instead of me? And he looked at me and he said, Saskia, I, no one wants to see me up there with my gray hair and my wrinkles. And my heart just sank because I didn't feel that that was true for me. And I did definitely want to see him up there on stage. But I know that that is a common perception for people who are in talent this time as we focus on people age 50 plus. And I know that there is a perception in the music industry that you're not welcome or you're not as interesting um, if you're not 20 or 19. So I started it to challenge that narrative and to showcase the talent that does exist in people who are age 50 plus. How, how on earth did we get there when you look at some of the bands that are still doing it and, you know, filling stadia by doing it like the Rolling Stones? I know, I know. And, and it, that just goes to show what artists can do. Yeah. A lot of the celebrities that we've got to help our cause and to talk about ageism publicly have done so because they know even better than most that unless you reach a celebrity status in your 20s or possibly 30s, it is very hard to break through into mainstream media if you say, I'm 55 and I'm releasing my debut single. I mean, we encourage people to do it, and you can, yep. but there is a perception that people feel that they are that, that the media are not interested in them anymore, like they've aged past that opportunity and that the boat has sailed So them. it's the media, not perhaps then the audience. It's the media that's the barrier to entry. Very interesting that you put it that way. I'm, I'm curious about that because I don't know if you've ever applied for grants or looked at what's out no. there for artists, but you always have to select an age box of what age bracket you fall into. And I started Talent is Timeless as a free songwriting contest for people over 50 because when I looked up what kind of songwriting competitions are out there, what kind of grants are available, it's always between the ages of like 16 to 18, 18 to 25. And if you go beyond 25, there isn't much, let alone 50. And I couldn't find anything out there, so I thought I'd better start one. <laughs> because, the, because the perception there, I, I'm guessing, Sas Saskia, mm. is that by the time you're in your 50s, well, you shouldn't need a grant because you should have set yourself up financially, work-wise, everything else, that a young person would need that because they wouldn't have that yet. They wouldn't have had the, the accumulation of years and well, all those it, years. Isn't that could interesting? Or... Because it, it leaves space for um, kids that come from wealthier families and more privileged families to just jump right into the music industry yeah. because it is yeah. expensive to get started. Well, that, that's a, that's that, a common thing within the media, though, isn't it? Is that if yeah. you come from a wealthier background, you can afford to go to London because you probably got yeah. you know friends there called Jocasta who could put you up for you know in in their spare room. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm brush strokes here, but, yeah. but 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 if you've got money, you're you have a more of a freedom to do these sorts of things than if you haven't got money. Mm. Yes, I, I think it's, it's not just that, though. I think there's a pain point in... And I, when I brought on our celebrity judges, I interviewed all of them yeah. about their experiences of ageism within the music industry in particular. And the only few people that had said that they acknowledged that it's an issue but they hadn't personally experienced it were very successful white men. 
and whenever I interviewed the Rolling women, Stones, <laughs> we're back to the Rolling <laughs> yes. Stones. Yeah, okay. When, when I in, when I interviewed women and when I interviewed people of colour on our um, celebrity judging panel, especially the women would feel the um, the effects of ageism sooner than the men, and all the men acknowledged that it is an issue, but there were so, only a couple who felt they weren't that affected personally. I've got peeps in West of Mare waiting to have her say. Oh eight thousand eight five five ninety four nine. I want to hear from you listening to this morning to BBC Radio Bristol. Have you experienced ageism? There's something else going on here as well. If you talk about female, older female artists, is if uh, I'll, I'll pick on Madonna because she is w- without a shadow of a doubt one of the most successful female artists ever. But she has to alter her appearance to appear younger because she perceives that is the only way, one of one of the principal ways, not the only way, one of the principal ways that she can stay relevant. Now that mm. seems patently ridiculous, but <laughs> but it, but it, but it, you know, uh, you and I talking about it on the cold light on a on a Monday morning seems ridiculous, but the reality is it isn't, is it? Because that's what she had to do. She's she's written some very interesting articles about her experience of ageism as a woman growing up in the spotlight as well and it's been fascinating to see her journey and to see her not accepting that and rallying against it but the fact that she would have to put so much effort into saying I'm still relevant I'm still interesting as a woman in my 50s says it all really it shows what a barrier there is for people yeah what you hope for and the reality two different things Saskia mm-hmm. Griffith Moore thank you very much for joining me this morning good to talk with you um, Saskia there founder of Talent is Timeless let's go to Peeps